welcome to today's Gale Forest Winds episode where we are going to be teaching you all how to catch, clean, and cook stone crab claws. My name is Amanda. My name is Emily and welcome to our channel Gale Forest Twins. you're going to need your crab traps and you're going to need to build your crab traps. So this video is specifically on dropping, baiting, and catching the stone crab. If you guys want to learn how to build your own crab traps, that will be linked in the description box for you. Yes, and that is because building your traps is an entire day project in itself and you're not going to be able to build your traps and drop them in the same day. So it involves concrete and you have to let that concrete completely dry. The first thing you're gonna to need to think about is your bait. Now you can use pig's feet, you can use fish carcasses, and you can use chicken thighs. Once again, we actually have a whole episode on experimenting on which bait works best. So you can go ahead and watch that. I'll link that below for you. However, we really like to use pig's feet because it lasts the longest. So you can put your traps out and come back seven to 10 days later to check them. Whereas if you're using fish carcasses, you probably gotta go check them within four days. So it kind of depends on your situation and what really works best for you. The next very important step is where to drop your crab traps. Now, unfortunately, there is no way to sugarcoat this. The real answer is experiment, and you're gonna have to drop them and see what area does best. I can give you a good rule of thumb. They are stone crab for a reason. They like to live on structured, rocky bottom. We personally like a mixed bottom, so maybe an area with a little bit of sand, a little bit of structure. If you go lobstering, wherever you see lobster, there's a good chance there's stone crab in the area. So think mixed bottom, Rocky, rocky bottom, bottom structure the one thing i would make sure you avoid though at all costs is just sandy grassy bottom with no structure so avoid that but every season for us we experiment with our first drop differently so we will put five traps in one spot five traps in another and we will experiment to help us figure out what works best for that season some seasons that means it's super rocky bottom in one area some seasons it's maybe more of a mixed bottom the last note I will add on where to drop is water depth. This is kind of an experiment thing. Um, we don't really like to drop deeper than 20 feet just because it gets, you need a lot of line, it's a lot of work. But for us, we've had success in anywhere from five feet of water to 20 feet of water. Once again, this is one of those things that from season to season, we kind of see what's working for that year. We are coming up to our first trap and it has been about 10 days, Emily, right? That is correct. So we're gonna hop to this trap and we're gonna see what's inside of it. Moment of truth for this location, trap number one in this location. We will see if this trap is good, then odds are they're all good. If this trap is bad, odds are they're all bad. <laughs> so we will find out. <laughs> well, we definitely have a catfish in there. I definitely see a catfish, that's for sure. Bycatch is normal. And we have a couple of decent sized stone crabs. Looking good inside this trap, kind of promising. First pull, you can see we still have our pig's feet in there. We have a catfish, we have some stone crab. So why don't we pull each thing out one at a time and go over it. I also want you guys to notice the amount of pig's feet that is still left. It has been 10 days and these pig's feet are looking pretty great. So what I like about pig's feet is that they last a while. And I'm like, how many pig's feet are in the trap total? Four. All right, so we put four, four pig's feet. feet in our trap, which is plenty. You, we, you can probably get away with doing two. Um, I think we just had a lot th when we were baiting them up. Oh, this trap also had the fish carcasses. Ah, you know how can, I can tell? How can you tell? Show us. You are looking at the spine from a fish carcass. I believe this was a bonita. bonita. I believe it was I a put bonita in there. too. So you can definitely tell we've got some fish bones in here along with some leftover pig's feet. But you can see that the fish carcasses themselves, there is nothing left but bone. Whereas the pig's feet are still meaty. You got plenty of meat on the pig's feet. So that kind of goes to show basically how long each bait lasts. First and foremost, we will get rid of this saltwater catfish. Do not stick your hands in there and grab them. They have extreme bacteria on their barbs that if it punctures your skin, it is not a pretty day for, <laughs> for that person. Let's move on to the two stone crabs we have in here. They both look like they have keeper claws. When you do go to grab your crab, be sure that you grab both claws at the same time. If you grab one, it can pinch you with the other. And also grip them firmly because you will be shocked and blown away by the strength that these crabs have. So do not think that you can overpower this guy. They are very, very strong crabs. 
right here I have my gauge for our crabs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this gauge and I'm basically going to, Emily, if you can help me out, we're putting it in the elbow joint and going down to that basically bottom pincher. So you can see that the claw is larger than the gauge, which makes this a keeper claw. Perfect example here, you can see from the elbow joint to the bottom pincher on this one, the claw fits inside the gauge, which means that the claw is too small. So we cannot keep the second claw, but we can keep the first one. It is legal for us to keep both claws if they are keepers. However, we usually don't do that just because we like to send the crab home with one of his claws. Our regulations are for the state of Florida where it is legal to keep both claws if they're both keepers. However, there are some states where it is not legal to keep both even if they're both keepers. Also, check your regulations every season because they do change by the season. A little fun fact to point out is these crabs, they have different claws. So one claw will be the crusher claw. And if you look closely, you can kind of kind of looks like molars, like your back molar teeth towards the bottom of the claw. And then the other claw will be the pincher claw, which is a little bit sharper and pointier than the claw. So one each crab has a crusher claw and a pincher claw. On this specific crab, the crusher claw is the keeper claw. And the crusher claw is typically the hand that the crab is. So this is a right handed crab because his crusher claw is his right claw. There are a couple of techniques to harvesting the crab's claw. We will show you both methods. Our personal favorite is the knife trick where you basically take the knife and you puncture sort of by the elbow joint of the claw and it stimulates as if the crab was in a fight. In the wild, if the crab got in a fight and didn't believe it was going to win, it would actually just release its claw. So that's what we're going to try and stimulate right now. So I'm just going to poke my knife right here into the joint of the crab and what he will do is he will release his claw on his own. There we go, just like that. So we've got a basically stimulated wildlife release of the claw. And Emily, you can go ahead and throw that crab back in the ocean to live and regrow <laughs> his claw back. Now, if you are going to be out for an extended period of time, continuing to pull your traps, what do you do with the claw? A couple options, saltwater bucket, live well if you have one or just straight into a bucket but you do have to cook them as soon as you get back to the house i like either the live well or just a bucket of salt water yes but we're definitely using water so Emily, why don't you go ahead that's what we're going to do that's where we're going to put our claws now definitely his crusher claw his right claw that's definitely a keeper no questions his asked pincher claw his looks like pincher a, claw probably a keeper as well however we like to only harvest one claw even though where we are we are legally allowed to harvest both since we know that his crusher claw is the keeper claw, I will show you the second technique for removing it. Now I like to take the non-keeper claw, in this case the pincher, the left claw, kind of tuck it in and hold the crab with my left hand and the, the non-keeper claw in one hand and the keeper claw in the other hand. Put him down on some sort of flat surface, maybe the top of the trap, the side of the boat, and I'm basically just going to go straight down at a bit of like a, a circular angle to pop it out of its yeah, shoulder. Yeah, so perfect just like that so basically emily is like taking that um claw and like almost rotating it in a circle underneath the crab's body would you say that's a good way to describe it yes and we have our keeper crusher claw next trap you guys can also see that r if you have recreational traps you do need to have an r on each buoy to state that they are recreational traps we spray paint our buoys black and use tape to mark out the R. Have fun with it. It's kind of a fun arts and crafts project. Some of our buoys are pink, some are black. It's a good way to get into it. But we get into that detail in the other video on how to build your traps, which again is linked in the description box if you guys would like to learn how to build these traps. And I see some crabs, Amanda. Woo! Oh yeah. How many crabs do you think we have? Well, we have some nice ones. Definitely two really nice ones. I think I might have three in here. Let's take a look. We have three crabs. One of them has colossal claws for sure. Oh my goodness, how exciting. Look how massive. Emily, that crab right there, the one with sun, massive. And then we've got two hiding in the shadows and we have some more pig's feet. Cannot wait to measure these guys. You can see this guy has a little bit of a deformed claw. It looks like he got into a fight or something. So when this happens, their claw still has to be bigger than the gauge. And there will be times where you'll feel like the claw let's just go ahead all right so he's 100 percent a keeper through and through even while missing part of his claw once again i'm going to take my left hand hold the claw's body the claw's body hold the crab's body and the smaller claw in one hand and then use my other hand to break 
the claw off, the keeper claw off, just like that. Perfect, and we got a wonderful crab claw. Before we grab our colossal crab, let's just release this guy. We can already just tell that he's gonna be too small. So there he goes. Look at this monster stone crab. So another way to hold them is by their two back legs. It kind of puts them into like a position where they can't really pinch you, but still be very, very, very careful, especially when their claws get larger like this. Guys, it is, I don't know, I will have it pop up for you. We've looked this up. It is a lot of pressure on one stone crab claw. This time going in with the knife trick, they usually release it very quickly. Just like that. So we had an automatic release and then I'm gonna take the gauge of this after just to show how big it is. 100% a colossal claw. Look at how large the claw is compared to the gauge. I mean, holy cow. We are three for three on great traps. Good, we have a good crab in this one. And for your information, we are in about 15 foot of water, mixed bottom, rocky bottom, where lots of current, where there's channels, there's flats, there's a lot of structure in this area. Not only that, I've also personally went lobstering here. So I've been physically in the water, diving, catching lobsters. So I know exactly what the seafloor looks like here. Just from that information alone, I was able to be like, hey, this is probably a good area to put some stone crab traps. And sure enough, it is. We are in the kitchen and it is now time to cook our crab claws. The secret though, the biggest secret that I'm gonna tell you that we learned ourselves from a commercial lobster fisherman out of Boston is to boil your claws, your crab, or your lobster, whatever it is, in a pot of salt water from the ocean. So we have two pots here. We got this water literally from the ocean. Don't wait till you're back at the ramp to do it where the water can be dirty. Do it when you're out crabbing. Get a big bucket, a clean bucket, and put your salt water. So I got two buckets here because we caught a lot of crabs. I'm gonna do my larger claws in one bucket and my smaller claws in the other Columbia's bucket. Pots. We got a really big claw here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put this in the boiling water. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna do this quickly so that they all cook the same time. What we're gonna do is we are going to boil our claws for eight to 10 minutes. And you wanna make sure it's like a rapid boil. Don't let the boil come down. Look at this colossal claw. So the reason why I'm also separating the claws by size is because the bigger ones will probably go for a full 10 minutes and the smaller ones, we will probably stay closer to eight minutes. You can clearly see we are keeping both of our pots boiling and we can actually see the crab claws are starting to turn that pink color that you'll see in a restaurant. I also have a pot of butter that I'm melting right here. This is where you can make garlic butter, you can make a sauce, you can experiment, but we just like to use butter, maybe add a little bit of garlic to it. Now, if for some reason you catch a lot of claws and you're not gonna be able to eat them all in one meal, kind of like us today, what you're gonna do is you want to cook them before you freeze them. So you're gonna wanna cook your, cook all of them. You need to cook them all the day you catch them. You can't freeze, you don't wanna freeze your raw claws. So we're gonna cook them and then we're gonna let them cool. And then the ones that we want to wait to eat, we're gonna let them cool, we're gonna vacuum seal them and then we're gonna freeze them. We've got our delicious stone crab claws. Some of these are absolutely massive. So this is like the average size we caught or like on the smaller side. And you can clearly see here how big the colossal claw is. But today we're just gonna eat a couple of these and we're actually gonna vacuum seal that colossal. We actually love to eat our crabs warm. So what we'll do is once it's cool enough that you can kind of touch it and pick it up, we'll go ahead and crack them right away. However, at a restaurant, you're pretty much always gonna be getting them cooled, probably over like a plate with some ice on it. Now, if you have one of these crackers, it is going to come in handy and make your life so much easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably crack the, sh the claw maybe once or twice, and then we have the knuckle. So we're gonna wanna crack here and here. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the claw in there all right let's see so this is actually sliding right out that's perfect ready to go and then we're gonna want to crack here and here one other method if you don't have a cracker is basically to use the back of a spoon pretty easy you just want to hit it pretty hard there we go so we've got this will should pop off if I need to flip it around and do the other side I can perfect so this is actually coming right out and we're just gonna wanna do the knuckles as well. Just like that. So you can accomplish the same thing with a spoon and with a cracker. It is time to dig in. So we actually made some garlic butter right here. And I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dip him in the butter. When you eat the actual claw, they have a piece of cartilage that runs all the way down 
the side of the claw. So you're gonna wanna bite down, but don't bite through the cartilage, and pull away. That garlic butter is delicious. We did a whole stick of butter and then three cloves of minced garlic, just kind of heated up on the stove. Super good. And then here you can see the cartilage. Can you see that, Emily? And for the rest of the crab, what you wanna do is you can use like a small fork or something to get the meat out of here. Thanks for watching and joining us today and learning how to catch, clean, cook, and eat stone crab claws. I'm gonna go ahead and link all the additional videos on baiting and building your traps below. I'll also link our garlic butter recipe, which was super easy. Thanks for watching, guys. We want you to get out there, have fun, and stay safe. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's a really fast intro. Stone crab, I feel like we need more information to say. But like stone crab, like Florida stone crab, like Just stone crab. We could say we're on the Florida Keys right now, but you can catch the crabs in Miami, you know? Right. That felt too forced. Can I do the intro? Yeah. It's one of our personal favorites. It's like our go-to. It's typically good every, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just like, you're doing great. Oh, really? Yeah. This is great. It's perfect. Okay. Um, I disagree with that. Okay. Well, what would you say? So what, how did you start that? Right-handed. So, so we no, have- So no, making him left-handed. My it's bad. Good. Sorry, we're getting shallow. No. Okay, yeah, you're okay. right. Let's try that again. I feel like we're, we're running shallow. Okay, so then go into the channel. 